Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look at this post-debate poll, and I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to get right into it. But this came out yesterday, and it used 1,174 likely voters. The pollster was Ledger, and I can't say I'm overly familiar with them. But this was released on New York Post, and the headline is Kamala Harris clearly won debate over Donald Trump, but VP got no bump from voters after performance. So that might be indicative of the polarized political climate. The only thing that seemed to move the needle was Biden dropping out of the race. After the Trump assassination attempt, a lot of people thought his popularity might spike a little bit. It didn't really happen. After both conventions, nothing really seemed to change either. And after this debate, it looks like the needle has moved very little, if at all. So let's go down here a little bit. And this confirms what I've seen from the headlines in most media. Half of respondents who watched at least some portion of the debate said Harris was the winner. 29% said Trump was the winner, and 13% said neither candidate had won the debate. That's actually similar to the post-debate poll I put up on my live stream the other day. But then it goes on to say the poll shows Trump gained one percentage point of support among likely voters from a pre-debate survey taken following the DNC convention. Meanwhile, Harris held steady. So that again seems counterintuitive. If most people think Harris won the debate, you think she'd get at least a temporary bump of one or two points. At the very least, I would not think Trump would go up after that performance. Again, that might just go to show you how polarized we are and how the debates might not actually impact voters all that much. I do like debates. I think they should happen. But even if Harris won the debate, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to change a lot of minds. So if we go down here, we've got the trend of Trump versus Biden and then Harris. This goes back to late last year. At first, Biden had the advantage, but then earlier the year, Trump flipped it and took the lead. Then it was pretty much tied until Biden dropped out. Then Harris has had about a three to four point lead ever since. And this is just for the national popular vote. And remember four years ago, Biden won the popular vote by about four and a half. And there was still a very narrow win in the key swing states, which gave Biden the win in the electoral college. So I would think Harris would need to win that national popular vote by at least three points. So down here, it says 60% of respondents who watched all or part of Tuesday's debate described it as good, compared to just 42% who gave the same rating to the Biden and Trump debate. And under here, another 29% of debate viewers gave it a bad grade, compared to 49% who said the same about the Trump-Biden debate. And then if you want to know how many people tuned into this debate, we've got about 67 million from preliminary data. That's up from 51 million in the last debate. And then down here, we've got some cross tabs on the voting intention. And for 18 to 34 year olds, Harris is getting 53. Trump is actually getting 43. That has got to be higher if you're the Harris campaign. 35 to 54 year olds are also going for Harris by 5, 50 to 45. And 55 and up are breaking for Trump by 4 points, 51 to 47. And then with male voters, Trump is leading by 9, 53 to 44. Harris is getting female voters, 56 to 40. So that's a decent gap. Then it goes back to talk about Biden and his disappointing debate performance. Then we've got cross tabs here for who won this debate. And again, the top line is 50 for Harris. 29 for Trump, 13 say no one. 18 to 34 year olds say Harris won by 15, 48 to 33. 35 to 54 year olds also Harris by 19, 50 to 31. And 55 and up, Harris again, the widest margin yet, 52 to 25. Male voters also said Harris won, 48 to 35. Females even wider. So it's pretty clear that Harris has the edge in that debate. I don't think it's overwhelming, but I think she has the edge. She came in there more fired up, and Trump took the bait too many times. Now you could talk about the moderators. You can say Harris maybe went over the top. You could say Trump was still fine. I get all that. But the bigger takeaway for me is this debate doesn't really seem to have moved the needle, at least so far. In fact, it seems like it moved it in the other direction. Harris stayed at 50% while Trump went up 1, 46 to 47. So yet again, whatever people think is going to happen, they really should be prepared for a range of different outcomes and they might be wrong. And the last thing they mentioned here is they polled if Biden had remained in the race, he would be trailing Trump by 8 points, 43 to 38. 9% would go someone else and 6 say they don't know. I guess that's totally pointless now, but it does show you how Harris does compared to Biden. And then also at the very bottom, keep in mind here, the margin of error is plus or minus 2.72 points. Now, one last thing we're going to do is take a look at the accuracy of this pollster. So for that, we're going to get on 538. And because they removed this data earlier in the year, we do have to use the Wayback Machine. So Ledger, also known as Insights West, they've got a B slash C rating. They've only got 12 polls analyzed. Let's go down here and take a look at their accuracy. This is within three weeks of an election. Those are supposed to be the better polls, and it shows you how close or how biased they were. The blue dots on the left overestimated Democrats. The red dots on the right did the same for the Republicans. So a few more dots on the left side, but let's look at the specifics. The most recent polls on here are 2020. They had sample sizes of over 800 likely voters, and this was right before the general election. It says here they polled online, and they had Biden ahead by eight points. Of course, Biden won by four and a half, so they overestimated Biden's support by three and a half. Usually we see Trump being underestimated 
dominated in 16 and 20. This kind of does back that up, but again, it doesn't really necessarily mean it's going to happen again in 2024. Then they go back to 2016. They hit Clinton ahead by four points, but they overestimated her support by 1.9. So more underestimation of Trump's support. Republicans are definitely banking that that's going to happen again. Democrats are saying this year it's a different story. And they also have some state polls here. They did president in Washington, and they were pretty close. They only overestimated Trump's support by 1.2. In the key state of Nevada, they had it tied, and they underestimated Hillary's support by 2.5. California, they underestimated her by 7.1. In Arizona, they underestimated Trump by 1.5. The Senate race in California was very close. The Senate race in Arizona underestimated McCain by 5. The Senate in Washington was pretty good, a two-point error, and Washington governor was spot on. So it looks like they have a pretty good track record in Washington. But again, that's all in retrospect. Nationally, they do seem to underestimate Trump, but we don't know what's going to happen this time. But either way, that's a look at this post-debate poll and a little bit of background about this pollster. So let me know in the comments. Do you like this poll? Do you not like it? Are you surprised to see Harris not get any kind of an improvement? And actually, Trump is the one who went up one point. Did you find anything in the cross tabs or any other data you're taking a look at? And what do you think about this pollster? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.